In order to impact our society, God is calling the body of Christ to rise far above the status quo of church normalcy. We have lived in a culture where right has been wrong for so long that righteousness has now become the abnormal thing. Hi there, I'm Dr. Rod Parsley, and it's my joy to welcome all of you to this week's international broadcast of Your Breakthrough. Such an honor, such a joy to know you make this gospel broadcast a part of your week. Well, this year has been one of tremendous expansion for Breakthrough. Now available in 220 million more households throughout Russia, Ukraine, Israel, and the entire continent of Africa. I pray that you'll take just a moment to comment on my social media. It means so much. Tell me where you're watching from, or I'd really love for you to drop me a letter in the mail. The address is right there on your screen. It'll be my great, great joy to hear from you, include your prayer request so that I can personally pray just for you. Well, today, I want to share with you the conclusion of a hallmark message that's been the core, really, of this global soul-winning ministry for over 40 years. It's called The Repairers of the Breach. You know, the great gulf between human persons and a holy God was a result of sin and only sin. Well, here's the good, good news. In the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, God came down to mankind because he just could not bear to live without you. Well, with the wood of his very own cross. He fashioned a bridge so we could once again be united with him. Countless souls hanging in the balance, and we're all going to pray that they come across the old gospel bridge to saving grace in Jesus Christ and dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. So just stay right there now. Here comes the conclusion of Repairers of the Breach. And after this, a word you will not want to miss from Valor Christian College, the School of the Spirit of God. Valor Christian College wants you to become a world changer with a four-year fully accredited Bachelor of Arts in Christian Ministry. You'll become a part of a vibrant community of believers with a passion for quality education, purpose-driven application, and a desire to receive an impartation of the legacy of Dr. Rod Parsley. Now is the time to enroll. Call the number on your screen and choose your area of study, including Bible and Theology, Leadership Administration, Communication, Business, media, ministry development, arts, humanities, and culture, and so much more. Choose a concentration online or on campus between evangelism, organizational leadership, and pastoral leadership. Valor is proud to offer a campus-only concentration in music ministry with exclusive training from Harvest Music Live. Call or visit valorcollege.edu and enroll today on campus or online. Ask about our scholarships, federal financial aid, and other programs to help you acquire the tools you need to change the world. In honor of her steadfast commitment to education, application, and impartation, along with her spirit of excellence, not only in her stellar academic performance and scholastic aptitude, but as a minister of the gospel, we hereby induct and present the Tasha Cobbs Leonard Music Scholarship today. May it forever be a testimony, not only of the life and legacy of its namesake, but of every student who receives it in the future. Somebody give it up! The Tasha Cobbs Leonard Scholarship is a 100% covered scholarship for your first year of tuition. That is such a blessing, and I'm so excited that this will be going to someone well-deserved for this scholarship.
ready? We're going to rebuild the bridge, right? We're going to take lost, hurting, dying, desperate, depraved, hurting, hopeless hordes of humanity. And we're going to get them from where they are. We're going to get them across this thing called the gospel. And we're going to get them out the other side. And then they're going to turn around and do exactly the same thing. That's the kingdom. You ready? So plank number one. Kindergarten PhD. Here's what to preach. The B-I-B-L-E. Did you get it? The Bible. From Job to Malachi. Not psychology. Not sociology. Not physics. The Bible. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible, the oak of God planted in the forest of eternity that entwines its roots around the rock of ages. The Bible, the Bible, his word that is forever settled in heaven. The Bible, shout the Bible. His word that cannot return to him void, but will accomplish everything that he sent it into the earth to do. His word, Psalm 107 verse 20, that he sent to heal us and deliver us from all our destruction. The word forever settled in heaven. The word that he holds above his name. His word, you can cast out devils with the big guts if you just say them with a heart full of faith. The Bible. Give me one of those professors up there. Here's what's leading the modern church. Give me a professor. Oh, yeah. Harry Emerson Fosdick. Just leave that up there. He is the father of one full third of the current church movement this cat know who your daddy is know who your grandfather is when you read somebody's book find out who their pastor is and then find out who his pastor was and then find out who his pastor was a full third of the church is following the teachings of this man. I'll not tell you which one. I'm just telling you a modern church movement. Here's what Professor Harry Emerson Fosdick. Talk to us there, Harry. I am a liberal in theology. Of course I do not believe in the virgin birth, nor in the old-fashioned doctrine of substitutionary atonement, said he nor do I know any intelligent Christian minister who does. A third of you have been to people that follow his teaching seminars. The other third of you watch them preach on TV and read their books. You just don't know it. But I know it. And I wrote six books to counteract it. Still silent no more. Culturally incorrect. Living on our heads. The cross, one man, one tree, one Friday. Gone. One man, one tomb, one Sunday. The finale. All six books to counteract his teaching that has infiltrated the modern church. You notice how little preaching there is on the blood in many circles? How little preaching there is on the cross in many circles? Uh, he has a buddy. Let me see his buddy. Uh, Theodore Parker. This guy. This guy. Whew. You can kind of tell it in his eyes. This guy... You ready? Look, look what he said. Look what he said. The idea of sacrifice. <laughs> and
and atonement are barbarous and inhuman. Now, if you really think you can identify pastors with 20, 30, 40,000 people in attendance that many in our ranks emulate, look at the teaching. The ideas of sacrifice and atonement are barbarous and inhuman. Why do we speak of the death of Jesus of Nazareth? He is not the central theme of our religion. Why do we not rather speak of Emerson or Immanuel Kant or Socrates? One might just as well said he speak of the wool of the lamb as the blood. I can put 15 books in front of you right now that echo that same sentiment that are in 70% of evangelical pastors' bookshelves. If God killed his own son, how can we say he is love? A bloodless gospel is a Christless gospel. And a Christless gospel is a Godless gospel. And a gos Godless gospel is not a gospel at all. I think I'm going to stick with the word. How about this? Get out of somebody's book and get in the 66 books he left you. Preach the book. Because the book is right and they are wrong. If you're going to put the word back in your preaching, I mean, you're going to preach. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as of the only begotten Son of God. If that's the gospel you're going to preach, stand up and scream for me to put that plank back. <laughs> Woo! In order to impact our society, God is calling the body of Christ to rise far above the status quo of church normalcy. We have lived in a culture where right has been wrong for so long that righteousness has now become the abnormal thing. Oh, you too holy. Look, I don't have to drink with you to get you free from it. Oh, it got quiet. I don't have to get one toke over the line with you to cast that addictive spirit out of you. I don't have to sit and watch some filth on a screen so you'll be my friend so I can put you up in front of the people and they all think I'm cool because I'm hanging with you. Let me tell you who I'm hanging with. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God commended the remnant church at Thyatira because they had not experientially known nor come into the depths of Satan. The devil has that inner circle in church of darkened hearts to whom he has imparted the mysteries of iniquity and the depths of degradation. And over a period of time, these doctors of damnation have permeated the mindset of the church to the point that we now call evil good and good evil. Over a period of time, these, this stuff's permeated our minds. We have, we live in a nation that preserves nature and murders children. That's our culture. Right's wrong, wrong's right. Ups, down, down's up. 
We have the technology and know-how to build solid, strong houses and beautiful church edifices. But we have weak, sick homes and even sicker churches. We have the technology and know how to conquer space, but we can't conquer our own habits. Preacher, you can't command somebody else's devil out when you still got some around. We're stronger, but we're not wiser. We're smarter, but we know less. We go faster, but we end up nowhere. We preserve the whale and the whooping crane and murder and abuse our own children. We have children living in our homes, populating our schools, attending our churches, who are driven daily with destructive thoughts inspired by demon spirits. And may I just submit to you lovingly that they need more than a pinball machine youth group. Here's what I believe. We got to give them something better than what they can get out there. Don't try to be Disney. You're never going to be. Don't try to be a Hollywood actor. You're never going to be. Don't try to compete with the halftime show at the, at the, at the Super Bowl. You're never going to do it. But I want to make an announcement from this old gospel bridge tonight. They've got something that they cannot duplicate. We've got something that they cannot counterfeit. And we've got something they can never give the world. Modern religion calls it a dysfunctional home and sends them to counseling. But the Bible calls it a generational curse. Some of you were bound by them. Daddy hit the bottle and so did you. Mama hit the pipe and so did you. Daddy left mama and so did you. Daddy beat the children and so did you. But I got good news for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? There's still a cross that bleeds. There's still a king that redeems. There's still a prayer that's heard and answered. There is still a triumphant, victorious church of Jesus Christ against which the gates of hell shall not prevail. And don't look now, but you're it. We didn't come to take sides. We came to take over. We came, we came to incite a riot. I dare you to shout, build that bridge, preacher. Come on, I dare you to shout, build that bridge, preacher. I don't know. What else are we going to preach about? Let's preach about, uh, let's preach about, uh, you know, we already got the word. Uh, we already got the cross. How about the, how about the blood? How about what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the that washes white as no other fountain, no, nothing but the, nothing but the, get on your feet and shout it, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now give him praise for it. We're going to preach. Uh, let's, uh, Let's preach about the one thing we all have in common and nobody wants to talk about. Mm. The one thing we all have in common and nobody wants to talk about. A sin. Here's your text. The wages of sin is death. But 
You can preach all day on but. Because everybody's in sin. But they don't get saved because you don't preach to them. We're afraid to say it. So they stay bound. But they keep coming to church. And then God says, in the judgment, if you failed to warn the wicked man when he was in his wicked way, his blood will I require at your hand. How about John 3? You must be born again. What? He must be what? If any man be in Christ, he must go to three counseling services and four membership classes. If any man be in Christ, man, some of us know when he reached way down for us. Because what nobody could get us out of the muck and mire that we were in. There wasn't nobody could set us free from what us had us bound. There wasn't a doctor's doctor, a lawyer's lawyer, a counselor's counselor that could help some of us. But I got good news for you. His name is Jesus. Here's what people want. Dramatic, irreversible, undeniable, unquestionable life change. They don't want to add, they don't want to join your club. They don't want to add their name to your role. They want what you got. And the way you got it is the way you've got to give it to them. I don't care if you call it born again. Excuse me, that's what Jesus called it, but you can call it something else if you want to. Number five. Something that'll do for you what a phone booth did for Clark Kent. The mighty baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. I just, I just want to drop the mic. Aren't you tired of a weak kneed, spineless, milk toast, milk sop, evangelical Christianity? Don't you want to see some miracles? Right over here, right over here, right over here. Somebody shout! Build that bridge. All right, what are we going to preach about? We're going to preach about uh, prayer. We're going to preach about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're going to preach about, how about this one? Divine healing. Oh, it got quiet. It got quiet. Where the will of God is unknown, perfect faith cannot exist. Where the will of God is known, faith begins. Now he gave you his will and testament. 1,166 pages of it. It's called the Bible. Here's your first divine healing text. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. If it did heal, he does heal. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not your responsibility to heal anybody. You can't. It's your responsibility to lay hands on the sick and believe for them to be healed and then turn and walk away and don't even look. Are you listening to me? Stop putting the pressure on you. You can't produce anything, but the greater one lives in you. Shall build that bridge. Do I have any more? Oh, I got a Bible full. Uh, how about we preach on mm, the rapture? What? Oh, we don't get into theological things at our church. Really? I've got a tape series out there. I buried it under those three crosses. I got a tape series and a book. I put it in there for all the folk going to miss the rapture. 
So when they start bombarding in this church, there are directions out there. This is what to do if you miss the rapture. Because he's coming. Well, I don't believe that. Well, that's okay. I'll just ask God. I'll just say, God, when you split the eastern sky and the magnificent magnitude of your perfect person sweeps out from north to south and east to west, when you're coming for me, Jesus, and I'm going to meet you in the air, just give me about 10 seconds hang time because I want to wave goodbye to all the folk what said there was no rapture. First Thessalonians chapter four, that's your first sermon. First Thessalonians chapter four, hallelujah. Look it up for yourself. He's coming faster than the fleetest hoof ever struck a pavement or a wheel ever turned on an axle. He's coming, he's coming from north to south and east to west. And if you're blood bought and blood washed, gravity's gonna lose its hold on you. You're gonna leave this planet. Cars and airplanes are gonna veer off course. The long whip of his crash of his whip's gonna billow out like the crash of a thousand cannons. The black hairs on the head of damnation are gonna grow white with horror. And I'm gonna go meet him in the air. Thus says the word of God. You want me to build this bridge? An impossible number to number of souls have received the greatest gift of all, eternal life, because of this message of gospel truth. Now, if you have yet to make the decision to cross the bridge and accept God's great gift, make today the day. Reject sin and walk in righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Repent, turn away from the old and let God cleanse you by his mighty power. If you'd like to pray as you begin your new life in Christ, I'd love to pray with you. Just say, Father God, come into my heart. Forgive my sins, give me eternal life, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I hope you'll visit me at rodparsley.com. Thank you for all of your prayers as we continue to take this gospel to the entire world. Tell a friend about it, visit, like all my social media and send me a card or a letter this week. Let me know where you're watching from. I'll see you next week, right here, International Prayer.